1780, if you're going to move to Kentucky, you're bringing your wife and a musket. If you don't have the musket, that's not good. You leave the wife, but you're bringing that musket, right? <laughs> that was obvious. Okay. But they, they enshrined that stuff. Okay, okay next go question. ahead. Jeff, uh, one of the things I wanted to know is, uh, what really is the definition of militia? And if they can be private and well organized, uh, can we not uh, use them today? Uh, the definition of militia, at least as the Supreme Court is considering it, is organized groups, able-bodied men who are trained in the use of weapons. Okay. Now, I'm sure that there's a more uh, specific definition. To answer your question, can you use it today, the answer is no. There's a lot of laws out there that say that uh, groups of armed men are not allowed. And so you're not, you're not allowed to do that. The only group of armed men allowed in today's society is the law enforcement. They're the biggest gang of all. You know? But you can't go and form your own militia uh, with, the, with the command authorities and you know, you're private and you have guns. And you can't do that. That's not allowed. Are you there at all? Yeah, well, I mean, the, uh, the Washington State Constitution, for example, uh, says that you can have the, the right to keep and bear arms, but not organized bands of armed men. So it's specifically in there. And then there's a lot of laws just in general, you know, things like uh, the organized band of armed men is not really something that in modern society people really want. We have the police force now. In terms of the militia, you know, remember in the time that the, the purposes of the militia are four purposes. Protect from invasion, protect from insurrection. And then one more subtle one was that if we have a good militia, we don't need a standing army. And then the last thing was to resist tyranny. If you have the militia, you got a bunch of organized men around, then it's unlikely, or at least the dictatorship will be short-lived. That was the original thinking behind the militia. Well, I think the reality is here today that we have the modern police forces with the helicopters and armored personnel carriers and the body armor and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think it's them that we would turn to to resist an invasion. It's them that we would turn to to suppress an insurrection also, not a militia. Hey, it's a question. Okay, Jeff, you hear occasionally where the federal government is going to have treaty relationships with the UN and use that as a toe in the door to infringe our Second Amendment rights. Right. I uh, forgot to mention the UN gun ban. Um, another thing to remember, you guys, look at this website, Snopes.com. Okay, it's S O N O P E S.com. And what it is is this website that they, they just make a living on uh, debunking hoaxes. And you get these hoaxes on email a lot of times where, you know, it's these things that are fantastic and hard to believe. If you get one of these emails, just go to Snopes real quick and look, and chances are they've already covered it. Uh, the UN gun ban is, is one of those. The, the conventional arms treaty is what it's referring to. Here's why it's not a gun ban and it wouldn't ban guns in the United States. Uh, number one, it has to be passed by the Senate first. So we would hope that the Senate would not pass such a thing. But secondly, even if they do, the UN Arms Treaty or Conventional Arms Treaty is not a ban on guns. It's just a restriction on the transfer and sale of guns. I know that's a little bit more subtle, but it's not a confiscation scheme. The worst that it would be if the UN gun ban treaty would be was that you couldn't go to Walmart and buy any more guns or you might not be able to sell anymore. Uh, but that would be the extent of it. It's not a gun seizure mechanism. Okay, next question. Uh, not really a question. Um, in reading the Constitution, I don't know how many of you have read it, it's just a little pamphlet this thick, it's nothing, it's very simple. And uh, obviously the men that wrote it figured everybody had some common sense. And the part about the Second Amendment was very easy to understand. 
Shortly after it was all done, James Madison, who was instrumental in writing a part of the Second Amendment, um, wrote a paper saying that the militia is the armed citizens. It doesn't have to be formed into groups. Militia is all of us. And unfortunately, they figured, well, oh, everybody knows that, and they didn't hire a lawyer, excuse me, to do all kinds of legalese and make the Constitution into four volumes. You know, I mean, they, they just wrote down what it meant. It means everybody. It means us. But it's, that's been lost somewhere. Yeah, remember the militia was everybody who's white and a male at 18 to 45. That's pretty much everybody. Um, no, it, but they were organized, though. I mean, you had your first Massachusetts, second Massachusetts, all that. They had their own flags, all that kind of stuff. Okay. okay, how many more questions do we have? Um, okay, Dixie, your side. Uh, thank you. Um, is Sheriff Turner still here? No, John. He's gone. He's gone. Yeah, Sheriff John Turner. Okay. Um, Jeff, I'd like your thoughts on this issue that no matter what gun control laws are passed by the federal government, they can only be enforced in our area if our county sheriff allows them to be. False. And the county sh fa that's false? No, sure. That's false. The county sheriff is the highest government authority in his county, and he does not have to um, enforce any laws that are unconstitutional in this sense. What about the FBI? No, that's false, too. Okay, I'm just asking. Just yeah. asking. All right, I'm giving you the short answer. Asking. <laughs> And the county sheriff has more legal authority within his county than the governor or the state or even the president of the United States. Just that's asking. false. That's false. Just asking. Yeah. No, that's false. I mean, the, uh, you know, I think practically, yes, Sheriff Turner has way more power than Barack Obama does. But that's only because Barack Obama is not noticing us and he doesn't care. Okay. <laughs> if he did... I mean, the man travels with 2,000 attendants at all times. I mean, his, his motorcade, his motorcade to drive from the airport to his convention center is larger than the entire vehicle fleet of the sheriff of Walla Walla County. Okay. I mean, the man controls the largest military in the world. You know, this is no comparison. Okay. If all of that was not right, what yep. I just asked you. Right. What authority does the county sheriff have when it comes to enforcing any kind of, quote, gun control, unquote, legislation that would come our way? Well, what would be his responsibility? Well, remember, just basically, he's a law enforcement officer. He's not a law decider. The law decider is the legislature. So the legislature writes the laws and they say, uh, you know, every sheriff has to go confiscate every revolver from every house. Well, he's got to do that. Um, it, I think there's the option that he could say, well, I don't agree with that. I'm going to conscientiously object, etc. I think practically speaking, he could say, no, nah, I'm not doing that. But is that within his authority? No. He's supposed to follow the law. He's law enforcement. That's it. You know, I think there's a tradition in the Western states that the sheriffs are, uh, you know, have a lot of power and so forth. Um, but the ultimate law enforcement power is with the governor of the state. And the governor is delegated to the attorney general. Uh, the attorney general, in turn, delegates it down to the local guys, etc. So it's all a big scheme. And even though we love the sheriff, and on a practical matter, on the ground, he's the man that we go to. He doesn't trump these other guys. He's just kind of a low man on the totem pole kind of deal. Okay, let's take a couple more questions. One back there. <clears throat> well, I was just curious. Um, I think Sheriff Mack would disagree with you. Um, I'm curious as to why. Um, he cites that uh, his first... Uh, obligation is to uphold and defend the Constitution and to protect the people. And when he determines the laws that are passed and enforced and in effect to be repugnant to the Constitution, he believes differently. So... 
Well, he, he, he can believe differently, but if he doesn't do his job, he should be fired. You know, and his job is to enforce the law. And the Constitution is the supreme law of the land, right? But he doesn't get to decide what the Constitution means. Justice Scalia does that, you know. Had Justice Scalia decided that a total ban on handguns was okay, then Sheriff Turner or any other sheriff in the country would have to follow that. But the uh, Supreme Court is the ultimate arbiter. They decide what the law is. That's Marbury versus Madison. That's way back. The sheriffs of today, they don't decide what the law is. Legislature writes the law. Judiciary interprets it. The law enforcement, what do they do? Oh, they enforce the law. That's it. Law enforcement. That's it. Okay, uh, quick question. Um, if they require us to register all of our guns, what's, do we have to do that? And yes. what I have understood <laughs> is that um, here's one of those emails that I got, okay? Every country that's had to register their guns, they confiscated our guns. And what happened to all the people that were annihilated after they confiscated our guns? And why can't we protect ourselves with a, the gun shops around here? I mean, these people that have go to gun clubs and stuff and get some organize, organization going. Well, like I said, about, as far as government information about you goes, Gun ownership is a tiny problem. The government knows so much information about every person in this nation that worrying about whether they know if you own a gun or not is just small fry, okay? But, you know, that said, as far as the limited thing about gun registration goes, uh, Mr. Heller did not challenge the licensing requirement. And remember his victorious moment? He brought his revolver in the red velvet bag took it to the front desk at City Hall, and he registered that gun. Now, he didn't actually have to ask for permission necessarily from the city, but he did have to get the license. So as far as we sit here today, if the federal government or any local government instituted a gun registration or licensing requirement, as far as we know today, that is not unconstitutional, and that's fine. You okay, gotta register. Last question with Daryl. Hi, Jeff. I'm wondering from a common sense standpoint, the stated objective of the gun control people, of course, is to eliminate these tragic events that we're seeing. But with 275 million guns in America, and many of them unregistered, uh, how are they going to achieve that goal? So what really is behind their motivation? Is this a precursor to something else? Well, let's say that uh, in Warsaw in 1942, there was perfect gun control. The only people that had the guns was the military and the police. Uh, you know, does that mean that every time guns are confiscated that we're going to wind up in a Holocaust? No. But 